Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to try to clear up some of the confusion surrounding digital modes. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So it seems like more and more I'm getting questions surrounding the Raspberry Pi and the digital modes and what you would want to use for this and what you would want to use for that. What software do you need for each of these modes? Uh, just the other day I got uh, this question over or this comment over on YouTube. It's from Spike, K-8-E-R-J-L, and he's asking, what's the purpose of the Raspberry Pi? All the digital modes are really confusing right now, and he had no idea that there were so many digital modes. So what I thought I would do is step back for a minute and do a video that I probably should have done a year ago. I want to today walk you through uh, the build a Pi install and kind of give you guys a guide as to which applications you need for what. Now some of them we'll be covering a bit more in depth. Some of them I've done videos on in the past that are really in-depth videos such as Hotspot Tools and others will just kind of uh, almost gloss over uh, depending on how much attention I think each application needs. But let's go ahead and jump over to the list and get started. So before we dive into the software, let me say that I have done a video in the past called Where to Start. I'll leave a link to that right across the top of the screen. So if you're just getting your first Raspberry Pi and you want to know kind of what accessories you might need, that video covers most of the hardware. But let's go ahead and dive into these applications. So when you run build a Pi for the first time, this is going to be the first screen you get, and it's the base apps. And it really is kind of the, the base applications that you may want installed depending on what you're doing. So the first one is Hamlib. If you're going to do any sort of rig control with uh, the Raspberry Pi, you definitely want to install Hamlib. If rig control is not something you're interested in, maybe your radio doesn't support it, or maybe you don't need it for a given project, you can probably skip that one. Now, the next two are Hotspot and Hotspot Tools. And it really depends on what you plan to do with your Raspberry Pi, whether you want to install these two applications or not. Now, I have done uh, an in-depth video on Hotspot Tools, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. In fact, uh, a lot of videos that I may reference going through this today, I'll leave links to all of those down in the description below so that you can get more details. If you're going to run your Raspberry Pi in the shack and you're never going to uh, carry it portable, you can probably skip Hotspot and Hotspot Tools. However, if you're going to take your uh, Raspberry Pi into the field and you want to be able to connect to it with another wireless device like a phone or a tablet, then you want to install both the Hotspot and Hotspot tools. This will allow your Raspberry Pi to generate its own Wi-Fi hotspot that you will be able to connect to with your other wireless device. The next item in the list is the GPS software. Again, if you're going to use this just in the shack, you can probably skip the GPS. However, if you're going to go into the field and run something like JSA Call or FT8, both of those applications require uh, timing in order to work correctly. So if your time is off, then you can't get good decodes and uh, you won't be able to communicate using those two applications. So the GPS is not only to provide you with coordinates and a maidenhead, 
uh, grid square, but it also provides accurate time for the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi board by itself does not have a real-time clock, so if you don't have the GPS installed, you won't be able to get the accurate time in the field. Now, if you're just running it, this in the shack, it's not a problem because if the Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet, it's going to pull that time off of the internet. Now, the next two items down are the RDOP and the RDOP GUI. The RDOP is a modem for HF, uh, and you will need it if you're going to do PAT WinLink over HF, uh, which is radio email. Uh, WinLink is a radio email application. The other thing that you might want uh, RDOP installed for is if you're going to use GARAM. And that is just a file transfer uh, application that'll be coming up here in a few screens. So if you're going to do either one of those, you definitely want to load RDOP and RDOP GUI. The next two items on the list, Direwolf and AX25. Both of those applications are needed if you're going to do some sort of packet type work, uh, usually with 2 meter or 440. So if you want to do WinLink over packet or you want to run something like an APRS uh, Digipeter uh, or you maybe you want to try to uh, communicate with satellites using Pi APRS that uh, is an application that I've written, you're going to want both Direwolf and AX25 installed. The last item on this list is Pulse. Pulse is actually installed by default now in, uh, in Buster. So when you're installing this, uh, this really needs to be relabeled in the uh, build pi application or the build pi script because you're not actually installing the Pulse sound server now, but you're installing a graphical user interface that allows you to interact with the Pulse, ser uh, the per Pulse sound server. So that's something that I would recommend for almost every single installation. The next screen you're going to find in the build pi script is the FL Digi Suite page. And this uh, gives you the ability to install a lot of different applications in this particular suite. The most important one uh, for almost everyone, well, I say everyone, anyone that wants to run rig control uh, between their Raspberry Pi and their radio is the first one in the list, and that's FL Rig. That's its purpose in life, and it makes rig control a whole lot easier on the Raspberry Pi. FL Digi is the next one down, and it is just one of the digital uh, application or the applications for digital modes that we can use. FL Digi has a truckload of different uh, types of digital modes built into it. So uh, whether it's PSK, and it's there's a whole lot of different variants of PSK, uh, or maybe it's Olivia or maybe it's Contestia or something else along those lines. You can use FL Digi to work a big amount of the different digital uh, modes that are out there. The other applications that are down below that are really used more by groups that do NBEMS. Uh, that's N-B-E-M-S. Uh, and you might want to look into that and decide if you need any of those particular applications. NBIMS is more popular in some areas and less popular in other areas. It's not something that anyone really utilizes in my part of the country, so it's not something that I've got a lot of practice with. Okay, so the next page that will come up when you're running build a pie is the Ham Apps page. And this just has a lot of different applications depending on what you want to do with your Raspberry Pi. Uh, and there is a brief description out to the right of them, but let's walk through these one at a time. The first two on the list is PAT and PAT Menu. This is to do WinLink with. So PAT is a WinLink client for the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to get into working WinLink, you're going to need to install both of these applications. 
Now, referencing back to that first set of uh, the first page of applications, you're going to need some of those if you want to install PAT and PAT menu. If you're going to work HF, you're going to need RDOP and RDOP GUI. If you're going to work uh, Packet 2 meter, you're going to need Direwolf and AX25. If you want to work both, obviously you're going to need all four of those applications. The next one down on the list is Chirp, and Chirp is simply used to program various radios. It won't program every single radio out there, and you'll have to visit the Chirp website to find out if your radio is supported by Chirp or not. Next up is GARIM, and it is simply a file transfer program that can be used over HF. Um, it, I'm not exactly sure. I, I haven't used this application a lot, but I also think it allows you to log into remote computers and either upload files or download files that may have been left in a specific uh, directory. You'll have to do your own research on this one, though, as I'm just not super familiar. Next one down is M0IAX. Uh, and it's tools for JS8 call messages. So if you're going to use JS8 call and you want to send something like a position report, an APRS message, or even an email or text message, I would recommend loading M0 IAX's set of tools. It makes doing that, uh, doing those different types of messages in JS8 call super simple. The next one on the list is Conky, and Conky just gives us some useful information over on the right-hand side of the screen of our desktop of the Raspberry Pi. Next up is WSJTX. WSJTX is probably best known for uh, some digital software called FT8, and it is a weak signal mode that allows you to exchange your call sign, your grid square, and a signal uh, signal to noise ratio with other operators. Uh, WSJTX also offers some other digital modes, but FT8 is probably the most common one used in that suite. Just below that, we've got JS8 Call. JS8 Call works on the same base as WSJTX as far as its weak signal capability, but it expands what we can do. So instead of just being able to exchange basic information, we can actually have a full keyboard to keyboard chat. We can store messages for other operators and we can perform relays uh, through one station to maybe a distant station that we can't immediately hear from our location. The next two in the list are Exaster and Yak. Uh, both of these are basically graphical front ends for an APRS Digipeter. Uh, I've covered some of this in detail in the past, including how to build your own APRS Digipeter. If you want to know more about that, check the links down in the description below. Pi APRS is an application that I wrote that will help you communicate with AP or using APRS. Uh, mainly, I wrote it for working with the International Space Station, but it could help you uh, work any of the satellites that utilize APRS. The next three pieces of software in the list, PyQSO, CQR Log, and Xlog, are all just logging uh, software that you can use to record the contacts you made. Now, you'll also notice at the very bottom of the list, TQSL. That's software that you're going to need if you intend to use Logbook of the World. So Logbook of the World requires some certificates that you'll have to download and install, and TQSL helps you manage all of that. Next up in the list is QSSTV, and this is simply an application to do slow scan TV. Grid Tracker is an application that works in conjunction with WSJTX. What that does is that allows you to keep uh, track of the grids that you have worked uh, so that you can kind of check them off the list as you work individual grids. 
Hem Clock is a cool little application uh, that we can run on the Raspberry Pi that gives us a lot of different information. Uh, so it'll give us some propagation prediction. Uh, it'll give us some solar uh, information as far as what propagation looks like. Obviously, it gives you the current time, and you can even track satellites. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and load up Ham Clock. Propagation prediction is exactly what it says. This is software that allows you to uh, enter in some variables and then see what the propagation looks like between two points. The EES is my own uh, personal emergency email server. It's an application that I wrote that can be utilized uh, in, in various ways. The base of it, though, allows anyone to walk up and connect to your Raspberry Pi using their personal cell phone. Even when there's no internet or no other uh, cell connections around, they could connect to the Raspberry Pi, navigate to a particular website that is hosted on the Raspberry Pi, and compose an email. Once they've composed the email and they click the send button, that software moves their outgoing email to your WinLink outbox and allows you to pass the traffic for them using WinLink. And the last one we're going to discuss on this page is gpredict. And this is simply a software that's used to track various satellites and where they are in orbit right now. So if you're into working satellites, gpredict is probably something you want to check out. And the last page that comes up when you run build a Pi is the utilities. And this is just various utilities to help you accomplish different tasks. There is a description again on this page, so I'm not going to go through every single one of these. Some of the ones I want to highlight, though, are Gparted, uh, which is the fourth one down in the list. And it can help you maintain uh, maybe external drives external thumb drives, and things like that that you may need to format or partition. The next one down in the list is the real-time clock. So if you want to run uh, a real-time clock in addition to the GPS unit, you would want to go ahead and install this. Now that's the only application, the real-time clock, that can't be installed the first time through using build a -Pi. You do have to run the update in order to install the real-time clock. BPQ is another application that I added to build a -Pi based on demand. You would use BPQ if you wanted to build and maintain your own WinLink gateway or maybe your own BBS server or uh, your own chat server. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and install BBQ. And the last one I really want to touch on here is the one at the very bottom, that's the GPS update. Uh, if you're running a GPS with build a -Pi, I would highly recommend you install the GPS update tool. It allows you to swap back and forth between multiple GPS units without having to go in and change a bunch of configuration files. And there you have it, guys. There's a look at what can be installed with build a -Pi and a lot of the different digital applications and kind of how they tie together. Hopefully this is going to clear up some of the confusion. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off if you found this video helpful, and we will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.